Hello, today in this writing advice video, I want to help you understand why you as a writer should stick to your guns and tell the story you want to tell. So this is the top three things that drive me crazy as a storyteller coming from people who read books, watch movies, and review them. Let's begin. Number one, when people complain about exposition. Now, I hear this a lot. People pointing out exposition. And while it's true you should not be focusing on, don't supply it in, in an info dump. Unless that's your thing. I mean, if you can make it work, there's not really a wrong way to do it. I can't sit here and tell you, you cannot do it this way. You might be able to find a way to supply an info dump that actually works. Take for example, in my first book of The Guardian of Light, there is so much backstory, there is so much lore that I need to establish as the writer pretty much in one section of the book. The way I went about it was intro classes that the character was going to take. This way, I can set up the history, the current lore, the historical lore, which if you understand, if you've read my book, you know what I'm talking about. It also sets up his ability to fight. It does so much, and there's so many things that go on. But I do it in a way where you feel like you're getting told all this information, but at the same time taking a journey with the main character. So he's not just sitting in one room being told, this was this, that was that, this is now, this is how it is. And you need that. You need to put that into a story. You can have a story without it. But then you're going to be spending too much time later down the road building up that lore. Which if you do it early on and you do it in a little bit of a way where it fills in things. A. It's going to make your book longer. B. It's going to provide some flavor to the world that you're building. So that's my first piece. Exposition is good. Just try to do it in a way that's going to feel natural and fit the confines of your story. Number two, repeating information from one character to another. Now what I mean by this is I've heard a lot of people recently try to fight the phrase, you may already know this, but, or some variation of that. First off, when a character says that to another character, they're basically trying to confirm do you know this they're also trying to say you may know this but here's what you don't know this one's pretty easy and weak there are several ways around it and it's not like you can't use this but the thing is if you have a character walk into a room and they say as you all may know such and such was destroyed that is the way some people actually talk because when that person walks in the room, they're making sure that everybody is up to date on the information before they continue. This also to the reader sets up the fact that yes, all these characters already do know what has happened. It's just something that most writers do and they do it for those reasons. I'm sure there might be other reasons that it's been done in the past, but don't let people tell you that things are irrelevant when you are repeating information because people do that a lot in real life so yes they can do it in stories too sometimes people forget sometimes not everybody is up to date on the information number three now on this one i'm going to give you a warning that there is a rant that's going to go along with this a very big one this is probably the one I have the most problem with when it comes to people who read 
watch movies, or watch TV shows. And then try to talk about it, whether that be in a review or talk to me personally. I want to start this by saying, in the link below, I will provide a link to this video to a Nostalgia Critic review of The Lost World, which is probably one of the biggest examples of what I'm going to talk about. In this review, there's a scene where Jeff Goldblum is talking to the creator of Jurassic Park, and he says that three people died, when in actuality, five people died in the first movie. Now, Nostalgia Critic blames the movie saying the character does not know how to count. But here's the thing, from that character's point of view, he only knew of three. The guy at the very beginning of the movie, John Hammond did not probably tell him that that guy died. And as far as Nedry goes, the guy who shut everything down, nobody knows what happened to him. It's not like they're going back into Jurassic Park to investigate the dinosaurs and see if they ate people. So, as far as they know, he magically disappeared. And that's where I have the problem. People who sometimes read, watch movies, or TV shows, they expect characters to know things that they have no business knowing. They can't separate what they know versus what the character knows. Which I feel like really hurts storytelling. Because it's like, you should know are an outside observer, but you're supposed to be viewing it from the character's point of view. Take, for example, Harry Potter. If you really pay attention to most of the stories of Harry Potter, we never really see much that happens from outside Harry's point of view. Now, true, in some of the books, there might be an opening chapter, which is something that happens before were brought to Harry Potter throughout the rest of the book we only witnessed the story from Harry's point of view now this is one thing JK Rowling did really good because she didn't give you any knowledge everything else is left up to interpretation by what Harry saw but when we're watching a movie and we're seeing things from every character's point of view oh well, why didn't they know about that well because they weren't there I had these friends who invited me to play a game called Rifts. It's very similar to d and In my eyes, it's kind of better than d and It was one of the first paper and pen RPGs I actually ever learned how to play. And they told me something very, very helpful, which I have been implemented in my writing. There is a difference between what you know and what your character knows. If your character died with a valuable rare object, you cannot create a new character and go searching for that object because you know that you died with it. And that really stuck with me. And that's why I get so upset when people are like, well, why didn't this character know that was around the corner? Well, because they've never been around that corner. So if people say something about a book or a story you've written, or a script, or anything you've created, and they have not finished every bit of it, and they still have that comment, it might not be a failure on your part. You may just need to remind them, how did you know about it? Did you know about it before the character knew about it? And if they say yes, then you might need to remind them, and say, well, there's a difference between what you knew as a reader, as an outside observer, versus what the character knows. I want to close this video by saying thank you to everyone who has been watching my videos and checking them out. I also want to say please subscribe to the channel. I own a lot of movies and for every 10 subscribers I get I will be giving away a free digital code. Also if you have not already, please visit my website. And if you enjoy a great epic fantasy series that takes place in today's world and takes a much different look at a classic childhood character in a story that's meant for adults, please check out my book series, 
the Guardian of Light. I want to thank you all for watching, and happy writing.